Hi guys, welcome to Queen Bee First Night Live. But anyway, guys, seriously, um, I wanted to. I'm on my way home from work, and I'm like, eh, you know, I have these things running through my mind that I want to talk about. But um, I kind of just want to wrap up a little bit about the whole um, Omar Kamar and Majesty saga. I know everybody's kind of getting tired of it now, but um, it is what it is. But I saw LaDonna, LaDonna, her name LaDonna, she did a, a live and she was addressing the whole matter with Chris and Omar and Kmar, which was kind of surprising because, you know, sometimes we kind of say certain bloggers, you know, they're very biased. A lot of people call me biased also. So now I know what it feels like when somebody say you're being biased, when in reality, all you're doing is just actually speaking your truth and speaking your opinion. But she, to me, you know, um, I've always been one-sided. That's just the way I see it. I never saw her, just like people say I'm one-sided and I don't defend certain individuals or whatever the case may be. Um, that's the way I used to always look at her as being one-sided and she only defend a certain group of people. And no matter what anyone else did that she saw that was wrong or said something wrong or whatever, I never saw her come out to address it. But she would address other people that was on the other side. So anybody a part of the Jamaican or Caribbean diaspora, you guys know what I'm talking about when I say this side and that side. So I don't need to really call names or explain what I'm saying. But I saw her came out today and for the first, first time I ever heard her really address Chris one-on-one -on -one and literally came out and told him that he was wrong. And she also told him where he went wrong. And she went as far as even telling him that because of what he did concerning the recording, you know, recording the conversation that he had with the boys. And that alone kind of turned her off. And she also told him, hey, because of that, I no longer trust you. I mean, I used to look at you as a trusted brother or someone that I felt like, you know, I'm sorry, maybe, um, you know, if I'm having an issue and, you know, I want to reach out to a male to ask their male opinion, he would have been the one that she would reach out to. <clears throat> but because of what he did, she's now feeling a little hesitant to do that anymore because she didn't realize that he was that type of person to do such things. Okay, voila, now you know. <laughs> We've been trying to tell you that for a while, but anyway... Um, so she, you know, she gave her two cents about it. And like I said, it's the first time I ever heard her actually be fair in her analysis of the situation when it comes to certain people. Then I noticed that now you have Lady V that did a live tonight and she actually had Chris on as one of her guests telling his side of the story. Now, the difference that I saw between Lady V and LaDonna, Lady V, to me, she was being cautious. She was being very cautious of the words she used, cautious of what she said to Chris. She literally allowed Chris, most of the time, majority of the time, to be telling his side of the story and, you know, stuff like that. And she interjected here and there. But her... But all her interjection to me wasn't about telling Chris where he went wrong. You know, it was more up to me making excuses for some of what he did. And this is just in my opinion. This is what I kind of saw and heard for myself. To me, she was being cautious. She wanted to watch what she say and what the kind of questions she asked him. And like I said, she let him ramble on and on and on and on throughout most of her program. And every now and then she interjected, but she interjected in a way to kind of like, to me, excuse away some of the things that he did and said. Now, a lot of people in the comment set, you know, um, the comment section kept on saying, hey, but he was wrong. You know, he put out, um, he's the one that first took it to social media from the fact that he did that. Of course, the boy's going to come out at him or whatever. So she kind of avoided seeing that comment for a while and I guess towards the end she finally say well Chris you know 
the only thing that I would say was wrong, you know, you took it to social media first and, you know, it should, it should have been done privately and, you know, you should have kept it off social media. And then Chris went out to say, you know, keep trying to make excuses. Uh, but the only reason why I'm come out, me only come out to explain what happened between me and the boys, Chris, regardless of whether you come out to explain what happened between you and the boys, bottom line, you came out on social media with you. I mean, with the whole thing. That's the main point. And instead of Lady V saying, no, Chris, that's not, you know, the point. The point of the issue is you should have never came on social media with it, even in the first place. If you wanted something to explain to the boys, y'all should have done that privately. But instead, she kind of sounded like she agreed with him, like, oh, yeah, well, all right. And she kind of backtracked herself a little bit and, and, um, and not really continue that part of the conversation with him. So... I'm saying to you, Chris, you was wrong, okay? And I'm going to sum it from the beginning because I don't think I gave a good summation of the way I just saw this whole thing played out. I just honestly believe, Chris, according to you, you kind of met them on social media. Um, They reach out to you, whatever, and you kind of take a liking to them. And, you know, from there, Chris, you develop a kind of relationship with them that maybe in a way you yearn for your own self, you know, like a fatherly figure to really be there for you and nurture you and guide you and instruct you and, you know, build you into this, you know, great man that you are today. You wish you had a father behind you was to be doing all of that. And you took these boys unto yourself and you literally start to really treat them as if they were your son not remembering that these are young adults. They're not kids. They're not child. They're not a little boy. These were young adults that had their own lives before you came into it. You totally forgot that. You took them on like they were literally your kids. And when they call you daddy, when it came to the point when they start calling you daddy, um, Chris, I think the day they first used the word daddy, I think you felt like a uh, a, a father, a real father, when a child first say, "Dada, Mama," that that glee and that joy and that you know, I honestly feel you felt that when them boys call you daddy for the first time, and once they call you daddy, that kind of solidify everything in your mind, and you love them that much more, and you realize in yourself that they're accepting you as a father figure in their lives, and therefore, you immediately went into a mode of protection, you went into a mode of dictatorship like some like a parents would dictate to their kids and you became in the mode of controlling right and I think throughout the process of you doing that yes you may have had good intentions at first but along the way Chris you got greedy and I'm gonna tell you how you got greedy along the way you realize that these boys could make you some money yes I said it Along the way, you realize that these boys could make you some money. And what better way to do it than to introduce them to the world? Um, and and you, you confessing a lot of stuff now about a lot of stuff that you did for them to help build the page and to gain likings and followers and all of that came through either little skits or things you tell them to say, things you told them to do. So therefore, they did not build their um, platform naturally you know it all came with you know little skits little tweaking the truths a little bit kind of become dramatic you tell them what to say and you know that's how they mainly um were able to get notoriety right and then they went through the whole episode of you know being not having much and you know your your followers now start to well their followers so they thought because they thought it was still their page but anyway um start to send them money they start to send them gift and you know it, it just took off it just took off and the more it took off is the more you realize that like damn i could really make some good money off of these boys so what i'm gonna do because i want to be able to control the person i want to be able to control the money and 
So let me talk them into or convince them to allow me to take over their page, monitor their page, and run their page for them. And all they have to do is just get in front of the camera and just say whatever I tell them to say. And, you know, I think even if you said to them, hey, um, you know, it's going to be a 70-30, you know, I'll get 30% of whatever you guys made or whatever. You have to understand that these were two young um, naive boys or guys or men or young men, naive young men that never been in this kind of spotlight before. So they're not fully aware of how the whole social media work. They're not aware of how YouTube work. They don't, they're not aware fully about how it pays or anything like that. And because they loved and admire and respect you at that moment and they trusted you. I think the biggest thing with these boys, Chris, they trusted you. And you took advantage of that trust. That's just the way I'm feeling right now. So anyway, so they probably verbally agreed with you and say, yeah, 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 that's fine, daddy. That's fine, daddy. You know, and you went gung ho. You went gung ho. You became micromanaging, just like LaDonna said, and I agree with her with that. You became micromanaging. You start to dictate, you know, everything that they do, everything they say, who they can have on their page, who they can't have on their page, and you just rant, and you go on and on, and you just kept on calling them, and probably stayed on top of them, and hey, where's Omar, or did you cook yet, or you know, who knows, but you, you just seem like you probably stayed on top of them, like a parent, like an overbearing parent, let's put it that way now, so you have parents that, you know, will genuinely care about their kids and want to make sure their kids are doing the right things but you became an overbearing parent and I think the breaking you kept asking yourself Chris like what happened what happened I just came back from Canada everything was so beautiful we had such a good time uh, you know what happened what happened I'm gonna tell you what happened Chris you know what happened Chris you got to Canada and you became a parent in that home Yes, I said it. You became a, and don't, I don't want nobody to say, mind your business, how you know you wasn't in their house, you just making up stuff. Like I said, I am assessing the situation and I am giving my opinion. I think Chris went into their home and instead of being their guest, instead of being their friend, instead of being someone that's been there for them and overlooking their pages and working along with them side by side, I think, Chris, you went into their home as a parent. And you, that's why you could even come out and say, I saw something, Miss City, we him talk to you. That, that should have never been said on social media. Never been said on social media whatever went down in them boys home while you were there was supposed to stay in their home chris you should have never brought that on social media but you chris being chris gotta be dramatic gotta try to get everybody to be on his side and how better to be on your side chris other than to throw somebody else to the curb right so i think from then the boys starting to probably kind of observing certain things about you but you know your biggest mistake? Your biggest mistake was when you showed those boys how much you are personally making on your YouTube page. And whatever amount they saw, Chris, blew their minds because they probably saying to themselves, what the hell? I so much money in my mic. So if Emma makes so much money, that means that we making the same amount too. Because again, don't forget, they're young, they're new to this Facebook, um, this YouTube game. So they don't realize that it may have took you years. And plus, you have way more followers than them. They're always giving you stars. They give you, you know, super thanks, super chat, all you know, the the, um, the ads that you get, they don't realize that you've been in this game for a minute. So you have built up a larger platform than them. Therefore, it, it they, you are going to be generating more money than them. They're not thinking that. Immediately, they're thinking, I so much money in my mech. So that means my page must be making that same amount. But if only I give us a little bit of money, so that means I'm a robbery. 
And I think that start to fester in their brains and start to look at you differently that you were robbing their money and you weren't giving them the amount of money that they're supposed to actually be getting. And because they don't have no access to the page, because you hear them say it before, which I already kind of knew, you know, when I said it in my last video, that I guarantee you them, them boys did not even have access to their own page. I bet they don't even have you know the password or anything to get into their own page and true enough that is what omar said that they don't even have a password to their page you completely took control of it so they weren't even able to go in and look to see how much they're really making right so i think that bothered them the whole rest of their trip that you were there i think they had an issue and they had a problem with that but what their mistake is they should have brought that up with you then and there Honestly, they should have brought that up with you then and there and let you know exactly how they felt and have you, you know, go in the page and show them how it really works, how much money you've really been making, and just to be, you know, transparent with everything. I think if you guys had talked about it then, it wouldn't have came to this. But no, they festered it because they didn't want to disrespect you. They didn't want to upset you or, you know, for you to feel like they're saying that you're stealing their money or whatever so they kind of held it down but they it bred into them now they might have now after you left and everything was good and dandy i know i'm talking long guys but i'm giving you my final um assessment on this whole situation but i feel they um reached out to somebody i feel they reached out to somebody and they probably told people how they really felt you know, I felt that he's making more money than what he's giving us. We don't have no access to our page, not even the password we don't even have. I don't think that is right. I think he's robbing us. He say he loves us, but yet I think he's robbed. And they really probably voiced it with somebody that gave them um, the advice to say, no, man, that's not right. This supposed to have a, um, your own, you know, pass. I, I've done a theme page. I know theme page, a phone page. I own supposed to have the password. I own should be able to go in. I see how much money it's making. No man, tell him say you want the page back. You know, call him man. You know, I could just see that probably went down. Whoever it was boosted them up to address you finally. And when they try to call you and talk about it, Chris, y'all end up into a big back and forth, big back and forth, because you felt like you earned the rights to have 30% of whatever they make. Right. So you didn't agree with them. Y'all went back and forth on the phone. You got fed up and you hung up the phone on them. When you hung up the phone on them, that pissed them off. That made them angry because they felt like they did not get the resolution that they thought they would have had from you. And they were also hurt because they felt like, you know, you being, you know, their so-called daddy, and you supposedly love them and, and have them, you know, their best interests at heart. Why would you not want to discuss about the money with them? Why did you hang up? So they were irritated. They were angry about it, you know, but they were not going to come out publicly with it. At no time do I actually believe them boys would have came out publicly with it. I think they would have waited till things kind of calmed down, you kind of calmed down, and I think they would have tried once again to open the conversation with you. But Chris, you know what? You're too jumpy. You're too jumpy, and every situation, Chris, you try to make it into a money-making business. And that's the problem with you. You're chasing money, and you use everything, every angle, every situation, every drama, every little thing you can find to use it to make money. And immediately, you start to think big in your mind, like, what a drama this will be. What a crowd this will draw. What a content. We can't run this guy a whole week and you start to think about the money and then you say to yourself you know the way the conversation ended and the way Mr. Disappointed in them I don't even care at this point if we relationship mash up all I'm thinking about is money and using this to make a content and that's why you said you fight yourself for a long time before you decide to come in front of that camera because you knew what you were about to do was wrong Chris you knew what you were about to do was wrong. And that's why you so-called battle with yourself before you actually took up 
that camera and sat in front of it and decide to play those voice notes and decide to tell about everything that went down between you and them boys. You knew you were about to do something wrong. So therefore, you did what you did. And I don't know if you expected these boys was just, just to shut up, stay quiet, because you think they are some naive, you know, little you know, boys that don't know nothing about nothing. You thought maybe they would have just shim and they would have kept quiet. But what shocked you is when Omar came out with that video and cuss you from A to Z, back to A and back to Z again, and then turn around and put a mighty curse on you. At that hurt you at that on you and you was so shocked because you never knew they would have came out and did that because you felt that they okay you remember you said you gave them what seven hours or something like that for them to call and apologize and call or talk about it you sat there and said I waited and give them time for them to come and apologize to me or give them time to call me and try to rectify. Why should they have to be the one to call you, Chris? You's a big, grown-ass man. Those are young boys, young men. They're not a child, they're not a picnic, but they're young men. You is a grown-ass man. Why didn't you not take the higher road, the more adult road, and pick up that phone, knowing darn well that these boys were sitting at their home feeling some type of way? Why did you not pick up your phone and you call them and try to rectify this? You see how you stay? Because you're a narcissist. And you think everybody have to come and bow to you. And you were expecting them to come and bow. And you're shocked when they never come and bow. I really that they hurt you. I really that they confuse you. Why in the world is these boys, as much as I treat them good, and as much as I was their daddy, and they were my child and my son, and I did so much for them. Why did they not come and bow to me? I got the bunny and I got the earth you. And you got a rude awakening. Chris, to sum it all up, you was wrong. You, you What you tried to do was to use and abuse these boys, use them for your monetary gain, and when they challenge you on it, you got upset. Like, how dare they challenge me? How dare them? But they did challenge you, Chris. And then once it happened, you decided to use what happened to make money by creating content, by creating a big old chaos and drama on social media, which is what you have done. Clap, 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 clap. You got what you wanted. It became sensational, right? Till you all end up on Lady V. Um, y'all end up on Lady V being interviewed. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to laugh. Y'all end up on Lady V show for an interview. You feel good now? Have, have you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish? Eh? Yeah. So anyway, at the end of the day, Chris, you did this boys wrong. You know, you, you were the adult in all of this. You were supposed to be the adult in all of this, that they trusted. And all in voice note that you play with private conversation you guys had together and all the bad derogatory things you said about these boys and talking about the fact that the big head won and the big head won and people call you from Trinidad and tell you all kind of things about these boys and if you ain't know these things before, this disgusting things you would have never chat to them and so yes Chris you went all out your way and you talk really bad about these boys right but at the end of the day I'm gonna go ahead and at least say to you you started out genuinely and somewhere along the way you got greedy and because of your greed you now end up with nothing nothing Will you guys probably become somewhat social again or acquainted again? I believe so. I believe so. But like you said on Lady V interview, it will never be the same again. 
never. You would never look at them again as them sweet, innocent, naive boys again, which is what you need to look at them as in order for yourself to feel superior and good. And because you're not going to be able to look at them like that again, it's not going to be any satisfaction in you to continue some form of close relationship with them. Will they look at you the same? No, because you said a lot of hurtful things. You call them derogatory names. They see their eyes is somewhat open differently from what they used to look at you as. And they could no longer look at you as that strong minded, independent, you know, good leader anymore because they saw the childish way you handled this whole situation and you did not stand up as a real man, a real adult and deal with the situation properly. So they could never look at you the same again. So with that said, good luck. I hope the next person that you decide to take under your wings, I hope you learn a lesson from what you, you know, the way you operated with these two and try not to operate with that person like that again, okay? Just deal with them on a professional level and just leave the whole daddy and you're my son and you're my daughter crap out of it because it's not going to work for you and it didn't work for you this time, all right? Anyway, guys, that's my summation of the whole entire thing. I'm done with the subject now. I I don't think anything more is going to pop up where I need to address when it comes to them too. But if it does, yeah, yo, yo, I will be right back with that again. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Lady, well, I am a lady, but I don't want to change my name, right? So this is Jamaican Queen B. just giving it to you raw and real. And this is all my opinion. God bless you guys. Have a good night, good day, good morning, good evening. Depends on what part of the world you're in today. Have a good night. Bye.